there was no separation between the Adut Ashkenaz and the Adut Asfarad. It's what it was a symbiosa, symbiotic passing in from information and the, and the proof of that, one of the proofs for that I think is the, is the traveling of Rabbi Nachman to Eretz Israel. When he traveled to, Rab, to Eretz Israel for those few months that he was there, he met, he got to meet all the people, all the Chachamim of Akko and Tzfat and he took the information of the Ari and he took the information of all, all what is discussed and written on that time and he bring it back to the she ship and go back to, to Russia and he put it down in writing to the level of that everybody will understand. He just got a better angle of what's going to happen. He understood that one day there's going to be a generation that won't understand or lack God in their life. And he said, I have to talk to these people. I have to bring it down to them and not leave it in the level of only Yechidim can learn and study the, the Kabbalah and everything else. And that's what he did, and he wrote uh, Likutei Moharan. So it's a, beautiful, uh, it's a beautiful example of how through the generation, with the difficulty of geographics where Jews were settled, from Morocco to Niche and German and everything else, there was a dialogue between few people that bring it to the Mechozot of the Yehudim where they settled. שנאמר, ואף ביותם בארץ רביהם, לא מעשתים ולא גרתים לכלותם באלפי הביתי איתם. Same idea, wherever they're going to be, I'm not going to reject them. And what makes what you say so interesting is that as far as one Jew is from another, there is this whole hestepanim that God is is hidden from us, hidden further and further hidden. But whereas one Jew is hidden, is hidden from another three, five, six, seven thousand miles, we're all the same distance from God. <laughs> so we all can find the emet from 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 um, the same part. So we, we may be distant from each other, but we're not distant from the truth. So so how could one Jew in Morocco have the same idea as one Jew in Breslov? Because they're the same distance from God. And the further away he gets from us, the more we have to pursue it. Beautiful. And that brings me to another topic that I'm thinking, or through another element, as the Ramon, the Rambam said, my morning is. He said, Tiv'o umizgo. Kol echad lefi tiv'o umizgo. His nature, his, his capacity. capacity. He bring it in the through terms of physicality. Tivo, a teva shelo, whatever is the techunot shelo, the genetics way of. Al chanoch lanar al pita ko. Tivo, umizgo, mezeg is the temperature. He can be uh, uh, someone hot that can easy to to get mad, and someone that can be cold and is uh, more relaxed, mm -hmm. and so forth. Lefi tivo umizgo shel adam. Kaha, a capacity of the knowledge that we taking of the emet, and whatever the emet he can take, he bring it in through the shivim panim, and that's the beauty of all of us. We can learn the same topic together. You, from your personality, will take it to what really is your, through your techunot, you can take it and understand it, and I will take it through my techunot, and this is how all the Torah will be dynamic always, and the emet always will continue to grow and understand. people it's will understand. It's sort of like a, the ore coming down, and it's filtered through different filters. I have a filter for the Absolutely. same ore. Absolutely. Chachma, you have a different filter from it, but the truth is still there, no matter where there? it comes from. Because ore is ore. A source is ore, two source. It's the same source. Three different prisons. You take it in the green level, I take it in the blue level, they won't take it in the red level. Hafokhba v'hafokhba v'cholobo. People don't realize that. This is the biggest challenge in our generation because um, people believe that the answers to everything is in Madha, mm -hmm. is in science. Science did a lot of good things. But uh, Zohar says, that in the 20th uh, by the, um, there'll come a time when, um, uh, I forget the exact year, 
the Zohar says, but he says that, the Zohar says that uh, there'll come a time when the well springs of knowledge will spring forth, okay? And that year, I forget the year, but it, it was in this time, he says, he was talking about the Industrial Revolution. He says, there will come a time, and he gave a date, and that date, what if for 5,000 years we had a horse and buggy? All of a sudden, we did it, just a better seat. All of a sudden, we went from a horse and buggy, we go to the train. So we stayed at the train on the ten minutes. Went from the horse and buggy to the moon in 129 years. So this was the gift that God gave us. This was the gift that he gave us was this ability to do and to make and to bring Mashiach and to bring the world. And what do we do with it? Between 1939 and 1945, we killed 50 million people. And in the 20th century alone, we killed 100 million people. Something like that, as E.F. Shah, is impossible without science. You can't do it without trains. You can't do it without poison gas. You can't do it. So we took all the atomic bomb. The atomic, we couldn't do it. We took all the good, the bracha, and we used it to destroy. We took this wonderful gift of you. So that's why I think it's a chiyuv on those who are who there to say we have to heal from that. Kabbalah to, to in what we can teach as a therapy. You don't mess it up again. Don't mess it up. We messed it up. The history, the history of the world, the world was so fucked so messed up. A Hungarian Jewry, a half, almost a half a million Jews, 450,000 Jews were killed in 55 days, from, from May to July. And only through the science of railways, and only through, only through this gift could it have possibly happened. But that's nature of things. That's nature of things. We just discussed how we have light in this room. And if you take the light out, you're going to have darkness. Which is not the and absence of light, which is a bria bifneyatsma. We disagree with physics. We say it's, it exists or something. Yes. So, more, moreover, the light can still exist, but in certain areas it doesn't, you cannot see it, so we're getting a shadow. Without that light, we won't have a shadow. In every good thing, there is a bad thing. We need, we, in everything that's been created, this is a Sefer Yetzirah, he said that, two opposites. The good, the good, the good, with the evil, the, the nay and the night, and everything in this world, because of that, created with the bad, created the, with the duality. But we, 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 we messed it up, but we messed it up. We didn't. I don't want to use this. Um, yes, I understand what you're saying, but what I'm saying is, is that the tela of the dvarim in two aspects. One, yetzer adam uram in urav, is bad. Is bad. If you give him a candy, he's gonna eat the candy till he's gonna rotten his his teeth. It's bad. He doesn't know. He doesn't stop. And you have the the, the aspects of to destroy. Just like we have the aspect of to create, and that's the obligation we have. That's why we are part of creation. He didn't create and stop. He gave it to it's us. It's a dynamic. Dynamic. He, he said, we, we're going to be shutafim. That's why Elohim. We say, Bereshit bar Elohim et ha-shamayim ve-et ha-aretz. Who is it? We becoming part of creation. That's true. Rab, 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 um, he says that, I um, uh, can't remember all of a sudden, uh, one of the uh, Kabbalists, Chaim, the, 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 the Chaim Velozhner says that oh. man is a shutaf. Shutaf. Masa Breshi. Betzalmenu kedmutenu. Betzalmenu. Who's Betzalmenu? How many are you, Shama? There were not too many. We shutafim. So when you become shutaf, you also destroy, you also create. What we really need to strive for is to balance. As much as there is bad in the world, we need to create the same that's amount what, of good. But we in this generation... And that's the polar that we need to it, play with. It. We in this generation, what did we do? I, I, I've always said that Auschwitz, and I keep coming back because I was... It just haunts me, obviously, as it should. What did we do? You give the Jews the land of Israel give them a few, uh, give them a little bit of time. And they are medicines and, and science. They're at the top of the field. 
how many times did the cure of cancer go up the smokestack at Bert Birkenau Auschwitz? How many times did a smirk when he sent a Jew for using science to, to die? How many times did Jews make up 2% of the population? And 50 percent, 30, 40 percent of the Nobel Prize in science is from Jews. How many times did, did evil destroy the, the world's capacity to do good? We, in this generation, we have no excuse. We have to spread the light. We have to say certain things weren't for certain people. We have, but, but, but now, I mean, I can't, there is no excuse not to, to hide the light. Absolutely. That's why I choose to paint. Mm -hmm. And that's why I choose to paint a certain topic, which is Bereshit. Mm -hmm. Because that was the light that the was light. the good of the world. The or is the or is the goodness in the world. This is the goodness. This is the goodness, and we need to remind the people that this is something that's happening in every second. People don't want to know it. I depends how you Again, back to Rabbi Nachman, he said, everyone have his own nigun. Kol Yehudi yesh lo ta nigun shelo. One can do, can find that light in a jazz bar in Blue Note in downtown, and one can find it in a gallery, or someone can find it in the Bet Midrash. We need to open those channels to those people. That's right. I remember hearing that the Klea Mishkan, the things in the, in the tabernacle, okay. Okay. they all remain the same, <coughs> except the Chatzotzot. The Chatzotzot, the two trumpets were changed every generation. Why? Because the Kabbalans say that every generation hears a different tune. And you have to call out with the trumpet that they listen to. Yes. If Moshe Rabbeinu, the Midrash said, he need to sit in the Bet Midrash of Rabbi Akiva, he won't understand the Torah that he gave. That's it. Okay, so I find today, because of my background, I didn't, I never grew up on, uh, I never grew up in uh, uh, Orthodox uh, background as a religious Jew. I never, I, at the age of 27, it was the first time I put the fill in. And I put, I, I did Shema the first time at 27. And here I am sitting, and I think I understood that I have an obligation. Obligation to use these tools and to use my background to bring it to people. That if you tell them, come with me to the Kolel tomorrow and let's sit and learn uh, Perek from, from Rambam. Shtuyot, leave me alone. Leave me alone. You have better things to do. To come into the gallery and to see art, not only art, modern art, abstract art, it's in. We are in the trend. And through this, he can find the Ketuvim. He find his, his heritage. He find the light. That's open up. He goes up, out from here, and he's saying, I have something to do. I have, as a Jew, there is a dignity here that we need to pick up on. You just inspired me. You just inspired me to something that I'd never understood before. The Gemara says, Masha Rata Shifcha al Ayam. What does that mean? Does that mean that some Shifcha is greater than Yechesko Ben Buzi? No, no way. And you just now opened my heart to the understanding of it. What happened at Kriyas Yamsi? There are beautiful bricks. There was artwork. If you look at the medrash, it says it, there was all kinds of bricks. It was beautiful. It was colors and this and this and this and this. <laughs> that appealed to a shivcha. A shivcha that didn't know one word of Torah. A shivcha that didn't know anything. A shivcha that was only uh, malbusha, in other words, her, her, her language, her, her, her clothes, and, her, and, 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 and uh, her names. But aside from that, she, that vision got to her deeper then, then the visions got to Yechesko Ben Buzi. It got to the, she on a good, she didn't come to his ankles, whatever. But but she was impressed deeper. Masheros saw Shiv Halayam. What she felt at that time, even Yechesko didn't feel because it appealed to her. That moment of Hid Galut Pagaba. Pagaba. We learn in Kabbalah. Pagaba, yeah. The part of it, Bodidut. What happening to the Avot? Vayivgaba Makom, and they put Mincha. You Every Jew have the capacity to live. So 
the shivcha, because of what she saw, pagaba, and she was in the level of, of like Yechezkel, when it's pagabo, we still have this, because as we said, the light is here. Emet is always here. So Yechezkel time or this time, we 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 capable. We capable. Well, well, why did the Rabbanu Shalom make it that there should be such art and such beauty by the people? Because he wanted to appeal to the shivcha. Of course, of course. He wanted to appeal. The Rabbanu Shalom. He wanted to appeal to the shivcha. Of course, she part of the bria too. That's it. And that's why we can we cannot leave any Jew and on top of it, of course, every human because akol matchil me adam. We cannot leave them excluded and to give up on people and to say, you know what, he doesn't have God in him. Beautiful. We need to conclude and take each one and saying he's capable. And that's where the Marmonid is again, the Rambam. Yeah. Everyone has the capacity. It's only about the intellect, how we bring it into him and to open up those channels of understanding and learning. Brilliant, and brilliant.